Training for climbing doesn't have to take as long as you probably think. So Jason and I compiled this list of 10 science-backed ways to get more gains in less time. Number one, train like a minimalist. A lot of climbing and strength training advice comes with the assumption that we're willing to spend as much time as needed to achieve maximal gains. So if adding an extra hour onto our session gets us, say, 100% of the gains instead of 90%, the maximalist will always do the extra hour. But if you don't have that extra time, taking a more minimalist approach to training might not give up as much as you think. When we look at strength training research, we mostly see that more sets equals more gains up to a point. However, that doesn't mean low sets necessarily leads to small results. One study on minimum effective training doses showed that two to three sets per week taken to failure was enough to increase one rep max strength in intermediate lifters. Also, in an article from Stronger by Science on effective strength training for the time poor, they note, a handful of working sets of one to five repetitions on the major lifts per week should be sufficient. So what does this mean for us time crunched climbers? We can get stronger without a huge time commitment. In fact, some of us could even get away with packing all of our strength training into one day per week. Especially for those that are newer to strength training, fast progress can be made with relatively little effort. But as you get more advanced, it will start to take a little more work to get your body to adapt. So to help make sure you squeeze the most out of every set, we'll need the next tip. Number two, do faster, harder sets. If we're training like minimalists, we should be extra conscientious of training quality. We don't have the time to make up for subpar sets by just tacking on some extra volume. Instead, we need to make every set count, and an excellent way to achieve that is to focus on better intensity. We're going to do that using these four methods. If you saw our video on cueing, you might remember that performing reps as fast as possible at a given weight seems to yield better strength gains than slower reps. And since we're specifically aiming for strength gains, we don't need to do many reps per set. Generally, around 3 to 5 reps is a great range for building strength, though you can go lower or higher if you prefer. Now, to get the most out of those fast sets, we generally want to be at an intensity between 7 to 9 out of 10 on the RPE scale, or about 80% of our 1 rep max, though novice lifters can see gains at lower intensities. However, bear in mind that research shows people are sometimes quite bad at knowing how hard they're trying. Athletes can easily feel like they're maxed out on a set, when in reality they've got several reps left in the tank. For this reason, it can be very useful to occasionally take sets to failure. While going to failure all the time is not required for strength gains, it's extremely useful to get accustomed to trying at your limit. If this scares you, do it under the supervision of a solid spotter or coach, or use high reps to test failure, rather than jumping right into a high weight 1 rep max. Now that we're pushing hard every set, we've got another opportunity to streamline things. Number 3. Use rest time more strategically. If you timed it out, you'd likely see that most of your workout is actually taken up by rest time. And that's not necessarily a bad thing, but it does leave room for optimization. First, make sure you use a timer to keep yourself on track. Short rests of only a minute or two between sets will probably compromise your performance, but excessively long rests of several minutes or more will bloat your session time. The same goes for rest between climbing attempts. A lot of climbers barely even think about rest times when climbing, but as Dan Bell noted in one of our recent episodes, it's extremely useful for building, or avoiding, fatigue. Second, rather than scrolling through Instagram during your rest, unless it's for Hooper's Beta, uh, you can use that time much more productively. Nothing's more productive than watching Hooper's Beta. <laughs> you can use that time much more productively if you want. Stretching and mobility work can be a great between-set activity. For example, between intense upper body strength sets, do some hip stretches or coordination drills. The only thing I'd probably avoid would be intense stretches lasting for more than 30 seconds of the muscle group you're about to work. Barring that, this method can save you a nice chunk of time or allow you to get highly functional gains for climbing you wouldn't otherwise have time for. Speaking of squeezing out extra gains... Number 4. Supercharge your warm-up. Combining our warm-up for climbing with some of our strength training can be a great time saver. This is especially true for fingerboarding since it should only be done at the beginning of a session anyway. Plus, I always find my fingers warm up much more slowly than the rest of my body, so combining my fingerboarding into my warm-up routine lets me get highly controlled, overloadable finger strength training that actually saves me time when I'm ready to hop on the wall. I don't have to do nearly as many warm-up routes before I'm ready to try hard. Other strength exercises can also be combined into your warm-up. The great thing about this is it tends to force people to think more carefully about how they warm up. 
If you can substitute some boring warm-up exercises you hate for some strength training, it's like a double bonus. Just make sure you're not tiring yourself out so much that you completely compromise your session. A method we like at Hooper's Beta would be three sets of three repetitions at five rep max for each chosen exercise. But what if we still just can't seem to fit in strength training without sacrificing too much of our time to climb? Number five, shift some training to a different time of day. One of the best efficiency hacks I've come across is the realization that you don't have to do all of your training in one big chunk. <gasps> For example, you could shift your stretching and mobility work to that free half hour you just happen to have in the evening. Or you could climb in the morning and do your strength training at home later in the day. Or you could do one of my favorite methods, fingerboarding and a little strength training before you get to the gym. This is why one of my favorite pieces of kit is the doorway mount from Frictitious, who have kindly reached out to sponsor this video and give our viewers a 20% discount when you buy a hangboard and doorway mount together. The craziest part is how easy this thing is to use. It literally takes seconds to mount and dismount, and you can even get it delivered with the hangboard pre-installed on the doorway mount. If you're worried about how much weight it can hold, worry not. The walls at my house are old and paper thin, and look how solid this thing is. It's the perfect solution for making my training more efficient because I can now spend much more time at the gym actually, you know, climbing. If you combine this with some weights, or better yet, the mixed hang protocol from Dan Bell that require no additional equipment, you can have the cleanest, simplest fingerboard set up anywhere in your house, ready to go whenever you need. We're super grateful to Frictitious for making such a functional product and for being willing to sponsor free content on this channel. So thank you, Frictitious, and make sure you check out that 20% discount if you want to get your hands on a setup like this. Number six, do strategic supersets. We can significantly reduce the number of rests we need to take by doing two or more exercises back to back. The best part is, if you pair exercises properly, you won't be sacrificing much in the way of gains. In fact, in a 2023 study, trained participants who performed a superset of bench press and squats versus traditional sets were found to have similar strength improvements but better endurance and of course were more time efficient in the superset group. Just keep in mind, supersets will feel more challenging to some people. Push-pull pairs are probably the most common type of superset for climbers, but basically all you're trying to do is pair exercises that overlap fatigue as little as possible. Research shows supersetting exercises that use the same muscles is not a good way to go, so look for pairs that mostly challenge different muscles. Dare I say you even perform a push, pull, and leg circuit? And seeing as we're streamlining our exercises, let's take advantage of the next tip. Number seven, do compound and bilateral exercises. Single joint exercises are awesome for certain purposes, but if you don't have much time to train, compound exercises can save you some major time. Which ones you choose to do and which ones you ditch in favor of single joint exercises should absolutely be determined by your goals. On a similar thread, while unilateral or single limb exercises have a time in place, you can definitely save some time just by doing bilateral exercises instead. Just remember, this doesn't have to be an all or nothing approach. You can do both. For example, never training one-arm pull-ups because they're unilateral would be silly for a climber. On the other hand, face pulls and Cuban rotations are excellent bilateral exercises for climbers that give up little or nothing to their unilateral counterparts. Number eight, use training blocks or periodization. There's simply not enough time to get better at every facet of climbing strength, flexibility, and skill all at once. One solution for that is to leverage our ability to accumulate long-term gains by dividing our training into blocks, also known as periodization. So one block may involve six to eight weeks of hard strength training and limit bouldering. Another block might dial back the intensity and focus much more on endurance-related exercises. Another block might ditch all strength training in favor of skill acquisition and climbing performance. If you program things appropriately, in the long run, you'll end up making gains in numerous areas that you may not have been able to accomplish by doing everything all at once. Plus, this method just makes training feel a lot less overwhelming when you're working with a tight schedule. Win-win. Of course, no amount of strategizing and periodizing will outweigh the importance of the next tip. Number nine, dial in your recovery. To get the most out of the time you have to train, you simply cannot ignore recovery. Just like every set needs to count if you want to see strength gains, every rest day needs to count if you actually want to progress. We won't bother beating the dead diet and sleep horrors, but just know that too much mental and physical fatigue will prevent you from making progress, so you need to be relatively fresh when you enter the gym. Also, for some climbers who struggle with lethargy, pre-workout supplements and sources of caffeine can actually help us achieve better training outcomes. Research shows that even in individuals who habitually consume it, caffeine has a small but positive impact on performance. 
Even coffee addicts like me can still see benefits from it. I'm not advising you start drinking more coffee, though we might just become best friends if you do. Just letting you know there are options. Number 10. Everyone knows the best way to get something done efficiently is to do absolutely zero preparation and wing it, right? I have no idea what I'm going to do today. No, that's a terrible idea. No matter how many tips we know about training like a minimalist, it will be very hard to put any of them into practice if you always arrive at the gym without a plan. So make a list of what you want to accomplish in a session and during the week and give everything an approximate time frame to stick to. It doesn't need to be super detailed or quote unquote optimal because that doesn't exist anyways. It just needs to show some solid intention. If you have no idea what exercises to choose, make sure you check out our mega video on how to train for climbing. You can also try out this super basic training program I put together, which you should modify as you see fit. And if you really want to optimize your training even further, I highly recommend talking to a reputable climbing coach that can create a catered program to fit your needs and wants. Don't forget to use the link in the description to get 20% off of any fictitious hangboard with doorway mount. Until next time, train, climb, send, and repeat. More efficiently, though.